and I kind of hated dancehall growing up because I'm dead. Yo, Wago and Jokers, it's original here. And for those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Joker, and I've been doing video production for over 10 years, shooting everything from event and party recaps to music videos, weddings, corporate ads, you name it. Now, three years ago, I moved from Jamaica to Germany, and together with my wife, Kimbashi, we've been shooting cinematic concept videos with beautiful ladies, making them feel confident, sexy, and empowered. Now, this YouTube channel is just going to show you a little bit of behind the scenes, giving you some insight into the prep, the planning. It's going to show you some of the production itself. And I'm also going to talk about the editing, how I make certain effects, things like that. But as you can see today, I'm outside. So it's going to be a different kind of video. Today, I want to talk to you a little bit about my experience living here in Germany in the freaking cold. I don't know if you can see my breath, but it is cold. My fingers are starting to get numb. Even though it's sunny right now, it's still freaking cold, but we're gonna get this and I hope you jokers enjoy. So apart from the obvious change in climate, there are other obstacles that I have to overcome to adapt to a meaningful life here in Germany. Now today I want to focus on the language and culture. Now, when it comes down to the language thing, you see, I'm still learning German and I even made it as far as B1, that's like B1 proficiency, but it hasn't been like a real urgency or a real need to learn the language or to like improve it because I speak English with my wife every day, I speak English with all my friends and with a little German that I do know, that's like enough for me to get by because it's mainly like small talk or chit chat or even just ordering food and like even at my job where I have to speak German it's I'm talking to kids I'm teaching kids parkour so you know they're kids I can speak simple German to them and they'll still understand it Yet, I feel like it's one of the biggest obstacles that's really holding me back from my full potential here in the country. So the majority of people that I do business with right now speak English. And that's not really good because there's a huge market of German business owners, which I can't approach because if I were to try and communicate with them now, the language barrier would just make the work too inefficient. And it's also kind of hard to make friends too because I can't just randomly approach somebody and speak German and expect them to understand what I'm saying. Truly go. Hi, sorry. You guys know where I can find pimento? What? <sighs> pimento? Pimento? Uh, these are uh, here. Yeah. How about. Uh, <laughs> can you show it on the internet? Maybe? Yeah, well, you have kind of internet yet. Yeah. Ah, piment. Yeah, it's on Good Woods. Good know. Uh, Alright, whereas in Jamaica now, I could approach anybody and like say anything to them and they would understand exactly what I'm saying. I could understand them exactly. And I could even speak in Patois. You know the dialect, we're in the love there. Now, when it comes to the culture, I'm just gonna touch on the social outings and the music for a little bit because that ties into the shoot for today. Now, in general, going out to parties and clubs here, it's a little bit difficult to find Caribbean music that I enjoy and I listen to. And I'm gonna explain that in a bit. Now, obviously, Jamaica is well known for reggae and dancehall. And that's really easy to find here. You can hear that in almost every club, but I don't vibe with that because they play mostly old school. And a lot of these songs either came out before I was born or while I was growing up. And growing up, I actually kind of hated dancehall because I couldn't dance. I mean, that's why I do parkour. And when it comes to reggae now, I'm more about the new gen, like Coffee, Protégé, Royal Blue, like those kind of guys. 
and you don't hear much of their music playing in the clubs. So here, nowadays, you're mostly going to be hearing Afro music playing in the club. And if they're also playing reggae and dancehall, then they'll usually just group all of that together and call it black music. They even have certain clubs where they also play those genres plus hip hop and rap, and they call those black clubs, which, to be honest, I find a little bit offensive because when I use the term white music or when I hear the term white people music being thrown around, it's usually in a demeaning way or in an offensive way. So I kind of feel mocked when I'm here in Germany and I hear the term black music or a black club. Plus, there's even a few black clubs where they don't even let black people in. It's happened to me a few times actually. Anyway, so when I go out, I don't really listen to reggae and dancehall. My vibe is soca music. And I just want to preview, show you jokers a little preview. A uh, little one because I don't want to get copyright strike. Okay, yeah, so that's soccer music and soccer parties are just the best. Like you could be half naked, grinding and dancing on sexy people in mud and oil and paint and water. And then another time you could be making a literal human tornado with a group of people just spinning with rhythm, in the rhythm, spinning to the rhythm. And then another you could just be liming and grooving to some tropical sounds. Like so guys just the best jokers. Now I know I said I couldn't dance, but I can move my waistline and I can dance in tandem with a partner, meaning me can dog a behind a girl. Plus, in the soca scene, it's also okay to just jump up and down and get on mud. Now I know some of you jokers are gonna roast me in the comments talking about how I can be Jamaican and can't dance or how I can even have a wife who's a dancehall queen of Germany and can't dance but I'm gonna mark all of them as spam. Both my wife and I love soca music and we will literally travel the globe to attend soca events. Like for the past two years, we always go to Miami for Miami Carnival. And just last year, we were in Portugal for a soca weekend for five days with seven parties back to back to back. Now, after knowing all of that, imagine how thrilled I was to find an organization here in Germany that not only puts on soca parties, like the best soca parties, they also make authentic carnival costumes and they put a big truck on the road to have a Caribbean inspired carnival. The Soak and Soka team, like I said, puts on the best soca events here in Germany, hands down. And they don't only do the big road march with all the costumes, they also do regular soca parties, they do boat parties, they do juve, they even bring authentic Caribbean food here. And it makes sense like why these events are so great because one of the co-founders, Daryl, he's actually Trinidadian. And he and his wife, they've made this amazing community of soca lovers and Caribbean expats that travel from all over Europe just to attend these events. After working with them, I finally found a place here in Germany where I felt connected to home. I was able to speak my language and be understood. And on top of that, like working in the space really just brings me joy and fulfillment. I mean, it's great music, beautiful people, delicious food, sexy women, bumper galore. Like what more could I ask for jokers? I've been working with them for a while now. I've actually shot two of their boat parties, their entire carnival weekend last year. And now fast forward one year later, I'm doing their costume reveal for the 2024 carnival season. Let's go, let's get it.
Now, to be honest, I didn't do that much pre-planning for this shoot. Like, I didn't make a storyboard or a shot list because I knew they only needed a few short videos to get people hyped, to get people excited. Just a little teaser to show them during a live stream. So basically the deal was that Daryl would get everything set up and I could just come in and do my thing, you know, quick in and out. But it's not like I'm a stranger to carnival costume shoots anyways. Just last year, I did this shoot in Miami with an amazing team, Big Up Yourself Industry. And I was responsible for doing the animations, for the background, and I even did BTS. And believe it or not, Jokers, your boy even got to model. So basically, Daryl had the set separated in two sides, one for pictures and one for videos. So how it would work is, they would take pictures with Daryl and then they would come over to me for videos. So I had a yellow and blue big checkered background to complement the colors of the costume. I had some tube lights, a red carpet, and a throne. Now, funnily enough, we had to use a throne because the backpack was just too big and the ceiling was just too low. The feathers, they were just too long. Like, we had to use a throne. We had to get them to sit down so that you could see the entire backpack. But that wasn't so bad actually, because that set the tone for the shoot as I was able to direct the models and give them a prompt of feeling like royalty as they were sitting down. Attitude of a queen now, okay? Looking for the vibe of a queen, all right? Yeah. So give me that energy. Now for this project, I knew I needed a horizontal and a vertical version. So I kept that framing in mind while I was shooting. And usually to make this easier, I would shoot in 4K, but I was using the Canon 90D on that day and I needed slow motion more. And this camera can only shoot slow motion in 1080p. And the lighting setup for this was pretty simple. Like I said, I had some tube lights, but we also had a lot of natural lights spilling in from the big exit. We did as much as we could to control that by like closing some of the blinds, but we worked with what we had. I also had two RGB LED lights and I used one for a backlight and the other as a fill light just to fill in some of the shadows. After the first two costumes it was basically just a rinse and repeat because I was given similar instructions and directions to every model like I would start off, start them off with sitting down in the throne the throne <laughs> and I would get detailed shots of the costumes and maybe ask them to touch somewhere to bring more attention to it you know rub their hands along their bodies small stuff like that and then we'd move on to some simple standing poses and then I would swap to my secondary camera. I call it the T5i, that's the American version. If you're in Europe, I think it's the 850D or the 950D, I'm sure it's the 850D. And then I would put that on a gimbal, my Ronin, DJI Ronin RSC with a wide lens, 10 to 18 millimeter, so keep it at 10 really wide. And I would get some catwalk, runway vibe shots. And then finally, we go back to the main camera, the 90D, and I would get them like just grooving and dancing to some soca music. So the shoot was going great, like everything was fine and dandy until we had a power surge. Like we lost all the power in the room, nothing was working. No one was around to help us. The breaker room was closed and we almost did not shoot the last two costumes. But these were the frontline costumes, the most important ones. So. You know, we could not give up. Luckily, Daryl had a great idea and he found some really long extension cords, essentially saving the shoot. Now, even after all that drama, we still finished like an hour early and everyone was happy with the shoot. I got a lot of positive feedback. Then it was time for me to go home and work on the edit. Do you see my breath? Probably not. Now for the edit, I already knew how I wanted the colors to look because while we were on set, in between shoots, I would put some of the clips on the timeline, color correct them real quick. And because I shot in 60 frames per second, in Premiere Pro, I was able to slow down the footage to 40%. And I showed these slow motion shots to the models, which gave them a confidence boost for the next shoot. 
I also showed some previews to Sarah and Darrow, and they loved how the shots turned out as well. well let's go. So now it was just a matter of selecting the best clips and putting them over some nice soca music. So the edits were supposed to be around 40 seconds each. So what I did was started off showing glimpses of the costumes and just revealing more and more as the video progressed. I edited the horizontal videos first and then using Premiere Pro's auto refrequence <laughs> auto reframe sequence uh, as a basis i did the vertical videos because sometimes the results aren't aren't perfect you know i also used after effects for the horizontal videos because i needed to hide the left and right side of the set and i used the mirror effect for that it worked perfectly yeah, so that's it for this vlog, Jokers. Thanks for watching. I know it's a different kind of format. Let me know if you like this kind of vlogs. I might try it again in the future, but next week, going back to the regular schedule, except this time I'm going to be joined with Kim, and we're going to be talking about how to get away with shooting nude in public. So you don't want to miss that one. Big up to all the Jokers who stayed and watched the vlog till the end. You're the real Jokers, true Jokers. Big up on yourself.